All right. So um, another order of business uh, that I think is worth discussing here, Amanda Nunes, who we did discuss um, in the wake of UFC 250, her dominant uh, title defense uh, for the featherweight belt against Felicia Spencer. And of course, um, with the fact that the featherweight division essentially doesn't exist in the UFC and she's essentially cleaned out the, the bantamweight division as well. It's kind of like what, what's next for Amanda Nunes. And I know that was a, a topic for us, but a new wrinkle to this story. Now, uh, Dana White on, um, I believe it was the Smoes podcast. Mm -hmm. um, he, he found out that Amanda Nunes has been talking recently about retirement. Uh, she put out some statement to a Brazilian outlet, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where, where she was you know, pondering this idea and his immediate response was, I'll kill her, <laughs> you know, and and how they were planning on now trying to build um, divisions around her. So so, Pat, um, that's I'll kick it to you on on, th on this one. I'm finding the timing of this very odd, uh, considering that one Amanda Nunes has talked about retirement quite openly for a couple of years, um, if I right. can recall correctly. Also, she's been the the champion. She's been a champion in the UFC since UFC 200. And um, why are we just now talking about promoting her? Um, Pat, help me. Yeah. Um, so, so my educated guess on that is, you know, and I brought this up before Nunez um, headlined this past pay per view, right? is if you look at her previous pay-per-view buys, they were not good. Uh, you know, Raquel Pennington, I, I think, was less than 100,000 um, against Shevchenko at UFC 215. It was like 120,000 is what they estimated in. Uh, she, frankly, wasn't a draw, right? And and you can go back and look and see when, when you're talking about, you know, Nunez versus Rousey. They didn't promote Nunez at all. This was all about Rousey's return. This was, you know, triumphant Rousey coming back. Even after she won, they promoted her a little bit, but not not to the extent that um, you know they would a, a lot of other champions. It was clear that she wasn't in the oh star big brand drawing power favorite. Now you have the pandemic going on; that's obviously going to cause a boost in numbers. But based on Dana's reaction after the post fight presser of UFC 250, where he said, "Oh, numbers were good" and all the stuff, and now his reaction with the retirement statement, my guess would be. Is, is that they probably have some metrics, whether it's from YouTube, uh, the pay-per-view buys, different social media impressions. Um, she's become so dominant. She's become this huge force ever since she's, you know, KO'd Cyborg. Uh, that's really brought her whole new star to a, or brought her star to a whole new level. And so this was their first pay-per-view of her headlining since that happened. And I think they took a look at the social media and whatever metrics they have on marketing, as well as the pay-per-view numbers. And they were like, finally, this woman is a draw now. Finally, people know who she is. They respect her. Great. We can build an entire division out for her, build the featherweight division. She'll keep running through people. She'll be this big star. Now she's talking about retiring, which as you mentioned, she's talked about for years. But my guess is Dana probably finally saw the numbers he wanted to see in that aspect. And now he's pissed because he may not get a chance to capitalize on it. Yeah. I mean, it, at the end of the day, like who is he going to fault for that though? That what, what I find really in interesting about this first, I'm going to just get this out the way, his actual yeah. statement, like I'll kill her. I've, I've seen a lot of backlash about that. I wouldn't take that remotely. Literally it's probably just a, you know, knee jerk, like, damn it, we did all that work and now I'll kill it. Like that, you know, just, just a, a, a silly statement right there. I don't think there's any harm in, in those words uh, in that context. But when you had her with a belt around her waist for, what, four years now? Mm -hmm. Now I, we're talking about promoting her. Like this has been the, the idea that now we're going to build a featherweight division when you've had a featherweight belt in play for – um for what five years now so are we a little i think it's a little too late at this point am, am i wrong here no no I, I think you're right i think it's a again it, i have no doubt that dana looked at the numbers and that's all he's been looking at the entire time and you know i mean imagine think of it this way right uh mighty mouse how long did he fight for 
and they tried to push him a little bit. Then they said, whatever. And once he was gone, oh, okay, we're going to get rid of the flyweight division. It's over. Then Cejudo stepped on the scene. Suddenly it's the division is safe. It's because the numbers went up. It's I'm sure he didn't. I, I am very positive that Dana made that decision based purely on numbers where he's like, cool, because the numbers gave us green light. Now we can do this. And he was probably frustrated before because you had a super dominant women's champion that wasn't bringing in the numbers he wanted. So he didn't think it justified the costs. And whether that's Dana or a team of execs or how that works, I'm not sure. But it's, it's yeah, it's too little too late in terms of Amanda has been talking about this for years. She's about to have a baby. I mean, you know, there's – as as a father, you know that takes a whole another level of, <laughs> of that dominates your life. Stress. Yeah, so yeah, it's, I, I think he missed the boat on this, and I think he's probably mad about it. But like you said, he he didn't try and invest. The UFC didn't try and invest and pour a bunch of money in trying to pump her up. They they waited for their number green light to say, oh okay, now the numbers are hit. Now you get the money, and that's and now you get the division, and that's yeah, that's what I find cool. even crazier about that too is that. Like he actively worked against her to trash her in the media ahead of of pay per view. So to to get on a podium and trash your champion, and then two weeks later say, "Hey, buy this pay per view with this person that I just trashed," doesn't you know those those two goals just don't they don't align? And and that's it's kind of <laughs> like <laughs> you're shooting yourself in the foot and wondering why you can't run fast. I, I I'm not quite getting um the, the mentality there so and then on top of that when you're talking about the featherweight division you know obviously dana white and and chris cyborg had their tension with one another but at the end of the day she was making you money mm-hmm. she was yeah. she was making you money and she definitely was a star uh for for the promotion so you've got a star you've got money coming in as a result of said star why was there a division not being built at that time it just all seems so slow and reactionary that you you can't i mean whatever what do i know no no i mean again you you're looking at it from a you're looking at it from a a perspective of people and and i i am firm in this belief that the way the ufc execs and dana has always and will always look at things is purely numbers i i've believed that since since they you know held out for Connor not doing media um, back at UFC, what well, was supposed to headline UFC, UFC 200. 200. Yeah, uh, I, I that was what convinced me. Okay, these guys have literally sit in a room and they all they do is look at numbers. They don't they don't, like they say niceties to people. They may have relationships with people fine, but like at the end of the day, all of their decisions are purely based on numbers. I would bet a good amount of money that if a number doesn't specifically tell them to do something. They don't do it. I wouldn't be surprised if they have huge models, financial models, or different type of analysis models you can get into um, in the consulting world that talk about cost analysis and all of that, that they don't have set up constantly when they're going through matchmaking and all this other stuff to make sure that it's, you know, all based on numbers. Because that's the only thing, in my opinion, that makes sense uh, based on you know, Amanda Nunez, as well as a myriad of other decisions they've made. But yeah, that's, it, it's, you're not thinking numbers enough, man. You gotta, you gotta get that CPA that I don't have and just get that and then just look at the books and then just apparently, apparently it makes sense then, you know, cause people, yeah, whatever, man. So, so once again, it comes down to the, the lack of initials on my name. I'm sorry, man. Clearly, clearly, I don't have those initials either. So that's that. I mean, that might be why we don't get it. You know, maybe Dana's <laughs> hiding. <laughs> but I don't know. Zupa's got all the initials now. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I guess that's that. I mean, I, I would be. I'm honestly, I honestly would be surprised to see Amanda Nunes uh, back in action at any point for the rest of the year. Um, with, with, with that baby on the way, trust me, that will consume every bit of being that you, you have. And if you know, she feels comfortable retiring now, I don't think she'd be in a rush back. Um, best case scenario, she comes back sometime 2021. I, I, I think it may be springtime. Um, there's no, there's no reason why she would, uh, as far as a competitive 
um, challenge. I don't, I don't think there's anyone out there right now that's, that's set themselves apart enough to, to justify that. And if our life circumstances don't align with it, why, you know, why, why, why go through the strain? Yeah, no, I, I, I'm with you there. I think, um, the only possible route I see where it makes sense for her to come back. And again, I still think it would be probably spring of next year earliest uh, would be if Aldana gets through home, she may kind of have a case for a shot because she took out Ketlin Vieira and then she would have taken out Holly home. That's, that's something, but even then, yeah, if, if I'm Nunez, I'm doing whatever I want, to be honest, <laughs> like yeah. nothing left to prove. No, you know, it's I would I want personally and just you know selfishly I want Nunez versus Shevchenko three but it does look like they're gonna make that anyway but if I was her I wouldn't feel any need to do that anyway so yeah I, I think she'll I think she's gonna be happy regardless which is good I'm happy for her and I want to end this by saying I don't want to see Nunez Shevchenko three fair fair enough man <laughs> more initials. if you get the initials we'll see the numbers we'll see if it makes sense man <laughs> 